Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we'll be discussing the sigmoid module. In case you're new to the channel and the format, in this series we discuss one module or several modules and then we go through their controls one by one and we follow the user manual. In the other series, showcase, a, another video would follow on the same module where we apply where we use today on a photo and see what kind of results we can get or we can expect. All right, let's crack on. As I've already said, the Sigmoid module is a new one. It has been introduced in the new version 4.2 of Darktable and it's used to remap the tonal range of the image, effectively changing the contrast. The user manual specifies that all of the modules before Sigmoid will operate in the scene referred space and modules after Sigmoid will be in the display referred space because the module is used to expand and contract the dynamic range of the scene to fit the dynamic range of the display. Therefore, make sure that either you keep it as the last module in your pipeline or you make sure that you don't mind that all of the modules that you put after it operate in the display referred space. The user manual specifies a couple of things that we should take into consideration when using Sigmoid. The first one is to use only one display transform in your pipeline, either Sigmoid or Filmic RGB or the base curve. You choose one of the three, but not more than one at the same time. For that reason, I disabled Filmic RGB here. And see it disabled. The other one is to adjust for the midtones first. That's valid for all of the three display transform modules. So before you use them, we go to the exposure first and we adjust it so that the midtones are to our liking. can have a look here to see whether most of the midtones are in the middle or you can have a look just on your screen to adjust it like you want it. Okay. The third one is, and again I'm following the manual here, less is more. You should try to adjust your photo using all the others modules first, the scene referred one, before you use Sigmoid to make the last amendments and those should be as subtle as you can make them be. And the last one is to preserve the hue of the photo to your taste. Uh, well, whether in this one or in other modules, well, not the base curve, but uh, Filmic RGB and this one both give you a number of methods to preserve hues. In this one, the advice is to use the per channel mode and tune the hue preservation to your liking. All right, let's get into the module proper now. Uh, you can always look for modules here. I'm going to enable it. And we can see already that it has an effect with its own default settings. Let's go through the modules one by one. The first one is contrast and it's a slider. As you would expect, this one is would adjust the aggressiveness of the compression but it leaves the middle gray unchanged. So in effect, it will expand the curve here or make it more narrow. Lower value means less contrast. You can see the effect here or you can see it here. On. If you're not familiar with how the curve works, then follow the link on the screen to check the video about it. The next slider here is skew and what it does is would move the compression towards the shadows or highlights. You can think of it as this one is changing the size of the curve and effectively the uh, contrast or the uh, dynamic range of the photo. Bigger one means higher dynamic range narrower one means a lower dynamic range and this one moves the curve either towards the shadows or towards the highlights. Uh, 
However, it does that without changing the amount of contrast at middle gray. That's why it was important to actually set your midtones properly in the exposure module beforehand. As usual, double clicking resets the control. The third one is the color processing, and that is how you choose how to preserve the hue. And the default one is per channel, and that's the recommended one. This one it's, applies the sigmoid curve to each RGB channel separately, and you have an associated preserve hue bar here that would let you choose how much to preserve the hue. 100% preserves the spectral hue of the image and 0% uses the per channel mode with heavy hue skewing. The acceptable, according to the manual, hue is somewhere in between, but it's up to you to decide what it is. However, we can try it now. So that's 100%. And if we drop it completely to zero, you can see the difference here however not sure how visible it is on these colors you can see the red here changing probably and you can choose whichever hue looks best to you in your photo the other mode is rgb ratio which is similar to the preserve color in filmic rgb this one maps the all three RGB values uniformly using the sigmoid curve. The effect is that it preserves the spectral color, but bright colorful pixels are desaturated. Uh, otherwise, they would be outside of the display gamut. And in this one, you don't have any choice. It just does it automatically for you. You can see that it's much more saturated. However, it's up to you to see which one works best. I'm quite sure that some will work better in some photos and others will require the second one. However, again, the default is per channel and that's the recommended one. The last two are the target black and target white. The first one defines the lower bound that the sigmoid curve converges to as the scene value approaches zero. And the other one is the opposite well it isn't the opposite it's the white so it's the upper bound when the scene value approaches infinity this is the target white that the sigmoid will transform that value to normally you do not have to change these however you can use this one to clip the white and you can use this one to give a faded analog look again according to the manual however it, that's not recommended all right, that's it for this video. I hope that you found it both informative and entertaining. If you have any questions, remarks, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.